Will she feel the same way if you lose your hair? Sure. She'll just feel it about somebody else. Simple, safe, and clinically proven to regrow hair. Does she want you to use Rogaine? Better ask. For decades now, minoxidil has served as a popular therapeutic agent in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia, or male pattern baldness as many of you guys know it as. But also, it has served as a point of intrigue for dermatologists and scientists alike regarding its mechanism of action. At its core, minoxidil's direct functionality is to prolong the antigen phase of the hair growth cycle. However, the exact mechanism of action of minoxidil isn't fully understood. Now, it is believed to influence the potassium channels in vascular smooth muscles and hair follicles. And this particular action leads to several potential effects. It stimulates microcirculation around hair follicles by inducing vasodilation thus fostering an environment conducive to hair growth. Perhaps it promotes vascularization via the induction of vascular endothelial growth factor expression and activates prostaglandins to further enhance hair growth. Additionally, minoxidil seems to inhibit the androgenic effects on susceptible hair follicles and directly stimulate them by acting as an epidermal growth factor. So really, all of these downstream effects is thought to be coming from minoxidil's potential influence on potassium channels. Yet one of the most crucial aspects of minoxidil's operations hinges on its bioactivation. For minoxidil to manifest its therapeutic benefits, it's indispensable for it to be converted into minoxidil sulfate in the scalp. This biochemical conversion is orchestrated by the sulfur transferase enzyme SALT1A1, spelt S-U-L-T 1A1, particularly the human or homo sapien variant of the enzyme but I'll just call it for the purpose of this video, sulfur transferase enzyme. Without having enough sulfur transferase enzyme, or any at all, minoxidil's efficacy could be profoundly diminished. While some literature suggests a response rate between 30 to 40%, as seen in the paper, quote, novel enzymatic assay predicts minoxidil response in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia, unquote, by Gorin A. et al., However, a more nuanced picture emerges from an observational study carried out in Germany. Jan Rundergren's study of 984 male participants showcased a more nuanced picture in regards to the response to 5% topical minoxidil. The study incorporated evaluations from both patients and physicians regarding the hair conditions and balding areas. When physicians assessed the balding regions, it was observed that among the 904 eligible patients, the balding regions had reduced in size for 561 subjects, or 62% of the population, in the study. The affected area remained unchanged for 317 subjects, or 35.1% of subjects in the study. And for 2.9%, it did fuck all, if anything. <laughs> Regarding hair regrowth, minoxidil was perceived as very effective by 15.9%, effective by 47.8%, moderately effective by 20.6%, and ineffective by 15.7% of subjects. This sort of gradient of efficacy is emblematic of the curve-like response to minoxidil treatment, highlighting that outcomes are not merely binary, but spread across a spectrum. So it is the case that most people do respond to minoxidil, but not as hyper responders as we commonly see on the internet, but there is some sort of varying degree. And that would make sense because genetically speaking, the presence of sulfur transferase on your scalp and skin is a genetic factor. And some people have more, some people have less, and then you have people, most people, falling in that average zone, the middle of the bell curve. 